Hi guys, this is tablenews.com and I'm here with something special. The Huawei MatePad 11 2021. We're dealing here with the very first device to run Harmony OS 2.0. It's not Android, it's not iOS, it's Harmony OS. The brand new platform, the brand new software from Huawei. And here you have the whole setup. The brand new M Pencil from Huawei version 2.0 and the special magnetic smart keyboard which also protects the device. I wanted to start the review by showing this to you. Now I'm going to put them aside and focus on the tablet itself. The device comes in three hues. We have here one that seems to combine uh, blue and gray. The price should be around $500. And this slate comes with a bit of a surprise. It's been a surprise ever since it was announced. I'm talking about the Qualcomm Snapdragon 865 CPU. It also has a high refresh rate, quad speaker, four microphones, of course, stylus support. And I think it's time to start the review. Now on the design front you should know that it's 7.25 millimeters in thickness and weighs a decent 485 grams. It's clearly meant to be used with two hands like this in landscape mode leaving enough room for your fingers. It's a bit heavy because it's long if you hold it with a single hand and you may become tired. The landscape format becomes clearer when you see that the front camera, the selfie camera is centered and not placed in any way here or here. So definitely a landscape oriented device. Now here on this side we have the uh, power button. Here at the top we have the volume buttons, plenty of microphones holes here, one, two, three. The fourth microphone hole is here in the camera, which includes the camera and the LED, this uh, module. Uh, this is a soft touch surface, it's made of plastic and the inner frame is actually a composite, an alloy of magnesium and aluminum to give birth to this device. It's solidly built, comfy and grippy. My only gripe is the fact that the backside draws some fingerprints and that's about it. And I'll say it again, one hand usage may suffer after a while, but in general it's fine if you hold it with two hands. I think it's time we discuss the screen and we're dealing here with an IPS LCD with a diagonal of 10.95 inches. You may as well call it 11 inches. The resolution is generous 2560 over 1600 pixels, basically 2K. Uh, we also have 120 Hz refresh rate. Right now it's set to dynamic. Depending on what you're showing, it may swap up to 120 Hertz or drop down to 60 Hertz. It also has TUV Rhineland certification for low blue light uh, protection. And as far as the video watching goes, we have this clip set up here. I'm going to turn the volume down and let's actually fire it up so you can properly see what this panel has to offer. Now what we're getting here are some pretty vivid, vivid colors also accurately calibrated. Not as vivid as OLEDs, but still looking pretty nice. The screen is bright and crisp. We have some generous looking uh, view angles, as you can see for yourself. The image remains visible even from the angle. And the contrast is excellent, even in a full sunlight, the device remains legible. Now, that's all I had to say as far as the video experience is concerned. Now, we did a bunch of tests and this tablet comes with a screen which offers RGB stripes pixel arrangement. And here you can see the lux meter value. We measure the brightness of 505 lux units, which if you ask me, is great. Uh, very close to the number one. I must admit we haven't tested as many tablets as we did before, but this one takes the cake with 505 lux. It's in, it's well within the margin of error enough to be almost on the first spot. So aside from the Nexus 7 from eight years ago, it beats Galaxy Tab S6 models, S7 models, S4 models, and all other devices, including the Huawei Mate Pad Pro. Now, if you want to tweak your experience, of course, the visual one, you go here, you got your brightness, you got your dark mode, comfort, eye comfort. Uh, we also have ebook mode, text size, display size, sleep and color. Here you can set a natural tone or color mode and temperature depending on what your needs are. Now if you go back, smart resolution will automatically set up the resolution depending on your content needs. And here we have the screen refresh rate which can be set to dynamic, high or standard. Okay, so that's about it, an excellent screen. And uh, now I think it's time we showed you the innards of the tablet without dissecting it. Okay, so let's see what's inside the tablet. First of all, we have the 
Qualcomm Snapdragon 865 processor, which was found on all the flagship phones which mattered from 2020, and it's a pretty impressive choice here. Uh, and it's also one of the few times when we're going to see Snapdragon on Huawei over the last years. It's a trend, we're going to see that more often. It's accompanied by 6 gigs of RAM and 128 gigabytes of storage. We also have micro SD going up to um, 1 terabyte. Keep in mind, it's not a nano SD, it's micro SD. They've made a compromise this time. As far as the benchmarks are concerned, things are pretty impressive. I'm just going to show you one or two and then we'll talk about other things. So, in on 2 to 8 uh, is number one, beating Galaxy Tab S6, S7 and so forth. It's actually a pretty impressive score if you ask me. Um, it even beats Galaxy S20 Ultra if you're comparing it with phones, which is a bit odd, but I'm doing it. And with this score in Geekbench 5 Multicore, 3168, it's also rather impressive. Uh, this one beats once again all the other models and even the 5 nanometer CPU based Huawei Mate 40 Pro. Even more impressive is the graphical benchmark 3D Mark Slingshot Extreme ES 3.1, a huge score. And uh, this one also once again takes the cake and if it, this were a phone, it would become the fifth place from the 500 phones we've tested so far, which makes things even more impressive. This comes with the cost of a temperature bump. Uh, 40 degrees Celsius are achieved when uh, doing benchmarks, but luckily when you're gaming there are zero problems with overheating that will not be an instance. Now, uh, as far as the battery is concerned, this uh, device you can see here opts for a 7250 mAh lithium polymer unit, which uh, charges at 22.5 watts and using its USB-C port here does reverse charging at 5 watts on paper. Huawei is promising us that we're going to get 12 hours of video playback and 12 hours of productivity. We put that to the test and let's see what came out of that. And when I say what came out of that, we have our own tests here. So first of all, we have one which relates to video playback. Basically, I'm setting a video to play on this device and it keeps playing it in a loop uh, with Wi-Fi on. Let's just maybe bump up the brightness a tad. Okay, so as you can see here in the video playback department, we achieved 12 hours and 36 minutes. We're on the fifth spot, we're only beaten by a few Galaxy Tab models, like um, for example the Galaxy Tab S6 and Tab S5e, but we're definitely beating the Galaxy Tab S6 Lite and the iPad Air 2 and the Huawei MatePad Pro. A pretty solid result for binge watchers. And continuous usage, things are all the more impressive with 12 hours and 24 minutes. This one was tested with the PCMR app. We only got beaten by the Galaxy Tab A9.7, which is a bit of a powerhouse in continuous usage. Aside from that, as you can see, we're beating all the other tablets we've ever tested. Charging requires a bit under 2 hours, basically 1 hour and 40, excuse me, 55 minutes which is actually not bad as far as tablets go. Uh, nowadays, even though they have evolved, we're used to seeing three or four hours even on Samsung or iPads, so that's rather okay. 30 minutes is 35%, one hour of charging is 63%. I would say we're doing fine. Also fine is the promise of, you can see it here, Hanman Carbon. They've handled the tuning of the quad speakers. One, two, three, Four. So quad speakers on board of the tablet, no audio jack, and um, also four microphones, which you've seen before. I think it's time we put the acoustics to the test. Okay, so check this out. There will be plenty of bass, so you best be prepared. Okay, so my neighbors are probably not very pleased with this. From these few seconds you heard, uh, I'm sure you're pretty much blown away. The same as I was. What's there to say here? Some of the best speakers, which I have ever tested on a tablet, for sure. Excellent volume, a lot, a ton of bass, lots of personality, uh, lots of uh, highs. You can really hear the highs and the voices were fine in the songs with voices. Podcasts were fine, movies were excellent. A lot of gravity to the voices we heard in the podcasts and movies. So some of the best speakers around and you don't have to take my word for it. We've done tests with acoustic tools and let's see what that panned out. Now when it comes to the power of the volume, 
Here you can see we achieved 90.1 decibels at the bottom and 90.9 decibels at the top. The bottom being here and the top being here with an acoustic sample, which means we're doing fine. We're beating the Galaxy Tab S6 and Tab S5e. We're staying below the Galaxy Tab S7 Plus 5G and the Huawei Mate Pad Pro. On the gaming front, uh, not as impressive, 96.8 decibels, but in real life, your neighbors will complain if you're very close to the wall which uh, separates you. Believe me, I heard complaints. Uh, it's above Galaxy Tab S6, iPad 9.7 2018, below Huawei MatePad Pro and Tab S7 Plus 5G, but definitely no slouch when it comes to acoustics, pretty potent device. In the camera front, as usual, I'm not a big fan of uh, using such a big device to test the camera. This is an 8 megapixel shooter, and if you go to the back side, we have an LED flash based 13 megapixel camera, which does 4K video capture. Not many options, to be honest, expected slightly more, but I'm also not bummed about it. It's a tablet after all. Now, these are the shots I've taken, uh, most of them taken on the balcony, flowers and whatnot. I would say it's doing fine, something like between the Huawei P30 Lite and P40 Lite. I would place it there at most. Not very good when you go really up close and personal with the close-ups of flowers, but it can, it can do its job for sure if you're only taking uh, photos which aren't well, professional. They're not made to produce money or influencer stuff. Keep in mind these photos are taken with a tablet, so they're fine for that. Now the selfie camera, um, I feel that it's a bit of a bummer. There's a lot of noise here and fixed focus, not the best in the world, uh, maybe expected more from it. The eyes are pretty expressive, but aside from that, uh, definitely not a champion, especially in the details and the focus things. So uh, selfie camera should be better and it's important for the video calls, which actually look a bit clearer than these selfies here. I think we're done with the camera, we can talk about connectivity, I've already covered the port, in case you're wondering, it's an USB-C 3.0 with OTG, and if you want to talk about um, other options of connectivity, I'm going to start with Wi-Fi, it's actually Wi-Fi 6, pretty fast and snappy, we got GPS, GLONASS and uh, Beidou and Galileo for global positioning, we also have uh, Bluetooth 5.1, with BLE, SBC, AHC, and LDAC, all the nifty codecs. We have four microphones here and a special system which cancels the uh, noise which is made by the wind and also by the keyboards around you to create better video calls and calls in general. Now, aside from that, uh, there should also be a 4G version of the device. This one, I feel like it's a dummy section. It doesn't have an actual SIM card, but it's sort of a placeholder for the 4G version of the tablet. And we did a bunch of speed tests and let's see what came out of that. Quite a few screenshots, if I'm being honest. These are the speed tests and they're pretty impressive. This is mega per second, 724 mega per second in download and 619 mega per second in upload. In case you're wondering where do those high speeds come from? Romania, one of the local providers, Wi-Fi 6. Okay, so. I think we have finally reached the core point of the review and the thing which many people tuned in for, it's Harmony OS 2.0. So first of all, I'm going to split this section in a few other thingies, we're going to cover the accessories and all that. Uh, from the time I received the tablet a week ago till now, I've received one update for Harmony OS 2.0. This was announced in uh, 2019. It was version 1.0 then, it's version 2.0 right now. It's supposed to be the third big OS after Android and iOS and it basically uh, feels a lot like Android with Emotion UI on top. Now before we get further into this, let's talk about the accessories. This is the second generation of M Pencil and in some countries it gets bundled with a tablet which is actually not bad. You can see it has a transparent tip this time around, you can see it's innards. It comes with two replacement tips in the box and it's able to attach magnetically to the device which also charges it as shown on screen right now. It's 100%. It uh, connects via Bluetooth and offers you a variety of features. Input latency goes as low as 2 milliseconds. It's comfy, it's responsive, and I think it's time I actually showed you what it can do. So I'm going to put the tablet here, snap it onto its case, and of course the core 
app you're going to be using is definitely notepad i've already doodled on it as you can see for yourself uh, not the best drawer in the world and definitely not the best handwriting in the world i have a drawing here childish anyway and here it is as i said before you can draw you can write there's handwriting recognition and more this is the note section and i think i can write something like uh, well let's see there's a palette here i'm sure you can see it this palette proposes you various tips so there's a marker tip there's a pen tip there's a pencil tip hi guys and you can definitely write more you can draw you can choose the colors you can invoke the keyboard and write stuff once again there's text recognition which is triggered and you can also draw all shapes and sizes you can do mathematical calculus there's an app for that uh, you can go here this one is called nabo for huawei this is actually kind of cool so you write something by hand and it will automatically convert to digital text something like uh, my handwriting is horrible so let's actually delete this and start again okay so writing clearly is important hope you got that of course you can choose colors and do a variety of things i also mentioned calculus before there's an app here uh, my script calculator so here we go three plus one plus square root actually wrote uh, 49 but it's okay so once again 49 plus 23 plus 65 plus square root 49 once again 55 so my 49 is horrible uh, definitely need to work on my handwriting and drawing skills but there's a lot you can do here and this stylus is pretty responsive and pretty comfy um it hasn't skipped a bit or missed a bit compared to its competition that's what i feel i'm talking about the apple pencil and the samsung s pen it weighs 16 grams uh, it has a length of 160 millimeters so there's a lot you can do basically it has 4096 levels of pressure and uh, attaches magnetically to the top side and uh, there are other ways it can work one of the most interesting features is the fact that you can write anywhere wherever there's a window which accepts text you can write so if i want to write here and maybe start searching for something i can write uh, let's write tablet well that one was perceived so basically any window you can imagine including a browser one you can write into now enough about the stylus let's talk about the huawei smart magnetic keyboard this new version for this tablet it has five rows of keys and uh, you can also see here we have a function key which you can combine with these uh, options here so you can set it to mute you can also tweak other features of course you can also protect the device like this when you close it up uh, once again just like i mentioned for the matepad pro this magnetic area here is not very strong uh, the bottom one is a bit stronger and there are two angles here 55 degrees and 65 degrees where we can attach your tablet and open it up like this it can recognize your face by the way now the keyboard has soft keys like laptops do it's pretty well spaced actually generously spaced there's a lot of space between those keys and let's put it to the test maybe write our website name the keys are a bit small but they're also rounded and quite comfy so that's that a pretty nifty experience if you ask me all in all uh, so five rows i'm writing pretty fast in an excellent manner we have an escape button here we have page up and page down and this shift button is actually interesting because it ties in nifty with the thing i want to show you right now so this is my good old huawei p40 pro and if i touch the shift key you can do a bit of mirroring and that's only one of the examples of what we can do here on this device when it comes to productivity and connectivity the devices are connected and i'm basically mirroring the phone on the tablet right now i can take calls from it and i can do a lot of other things i can drag and drop content without a problem so that's one aspect of the device collaboration and of course when i'm done i can close it up there's the aspect as well of using the tablet as a monitor for a pc and also continuing where you left off that's another feature so you start something on the phone continue on the tablet and then continue on the huawei matebook laptop for security we have the face recognition via this camera i would have preferred a fingerprint scanner but we don't have that 
uh, and I think it's time we ditched all the accessories and focused on Harmony OS just for a bit. So Harmony OS 2.0, let's face it, looks like Android, feels like Android and you have here at the leftmost side a sort of feed which includes your news taken from Petal and also a bunch of useful shortcuts and widgets, recommendations of app to install and other things. This is the main home screen area, it includes apps and two dock bars. One shows the frequently used apps and one shows the recently used apps. Of course you can invoke widgets if you want to, so let's pinch the screen. These are the widgets, similar to the Android ones. You can resize them, obviously. We have an app drawer. That's optional, actually activated. Initially, all the apps were on the home screens. If you swipe from the left side, you can see the notification area. If you swipe from the right side, you can see the control center, which feels familiar, looks like the iOS one. We have a dark mode, we have an ebook mode, auto rotate, Huawei share, and so forth, including screen record and wireless projection. You can project your screen wirelessly to another screen. Connectivity options, of course, super device, actually one of the cool features of Harmony OS. You can basically seamlessly link with other Huawei devices, speakers, headphones, uh, TV sets, and uh, well, laptops. So you start something on one device and then you send it, even a game, to another device like a TV or things like that. This is the connection area. You have Huawei Share available here. This is the sounds department. This is the biometrics with your face recognition, security. There's also privacy with a permission manager. Digital balance, which shows you the screen time. Huawei Assistant is Celia, and we have quite a few more. Now, if you want to install apps, you're going to use the Huawei App Gallery, which is becoming more and more populated, and has a pretty nicely spaced interface. It's split in apps, games, and my very own section. Now, aside from this, you also have Petal, which aside from being a search engine, which shows you useful stuff and news and sports and business. Uh, you can also get and find apps here. This is the Petal section, which basically shows your needed stuff, your, I would say, the weather, what to watch, basically a set of recommendations. This is the recent things you search for recently. And this is my own profile with search history, downloads and more. So that's Petal, another source of apps. There's also Petal Maps from Huawei. And this is what it looks like. It's a rival for Google Maps. It's still in its infancy, but it's starting to look pretty well. We have directions, we have my own profile, saved places, and the core features are here, including a satellite view. So I feel like I'm forgetting something. What I'm not forgetting is the gesture control. So swipes to the side, of course. Uh, if you're in an app and you do a swipe like this, it's back, it's, excuse me, it's home. So this is home, swipe up. And a semi-swipe, as I like to call it, or a swipe in an L shape. This is the multitasking area where you can see the apps. And if you're inside an apps like file, for example, if you keep pressed from the side and trigger it, you can do the split screen thingy, but also the floating window thingy. So you can have two apps in split screen and an extra one floating above them, for example. Uh, let's maybe pull the notepad here, or maybe have multiple floating apps. It all depends on what you want to have so this is the browser, for example, and the selection goes on and on. This is the calculator, so you can keep doing what you're doing on one thing, on one app, and on the other one, you can split it like this. I sh you should also be able to enlarge it if you want to. Use the other one like this. It's actually a bit counterintuitive because I want to split the screen right now. I'm not very sure how to do it. There should be definitely an option here for that. Oh, that's it, keeping it pressed. Now, this is what I was talking about, splitting the screen in two so you can work at two apps at the same time. Okay, so that's navigation. Of course, we don't have Google services and Google apps. We're only using Huawei stuff. So there's that. Of course, uh, among them is the browser. This is the Huawei browser. Uh, and uh, by the way, one of the core things, if you need to remember anything from this review, uh, remember that uh, this uh, OS accepts APKs. The Android APKs are available to install here. We have an optimizer here, which does the cleanup, viral scanning, and optimizes the resources on your device. And uh, 
I think this is pretty much it as far as the experience is concerned. Using email, you can actually hook up your Gmail account, so that's nice. These are the tools. These are the stylus tools you saw. This is WPS Office and Filmora Go, which actually accepts you writing with a stylus on top of videos and adding cool effects. And pre-installed apps, well, we got books. I'm actually impressed by the variety of choices we have here for Huawei books, including uh, audiobooks, quite a few of them. They're also offering you their own video store. And they're also offering you their own music store. Okay, so that's pretty much it. There's also a game center for gamers with special offers and benefits. This is the health section, which is synced to your bracelet and watch. Shows you calories and whatnot and sleep. Uh, this is the notepad you saw before and I think we addressed everything. Uh, if I forgot something, be assured that you're going to see it in the text review. Now, as we proceed to the end, the end of the review, I'm going to play a bit of asphalt for you and I'm going to give the device some conclusions and marks. Okay, so it's time for the verdict. On the pro side, we have a comfy tablet, especially when held with two hands. It's very well built, at the same time it has a bright screen with 120Hz refresh rate. It's got a very powerful CPU, I can totally attest to that and games look wonderful on it, as you can see here. Beautiful uh, lighting effects, by the way. Uh, good battery, battery life and not too shabby charging compared to what's out there. Fast Wi-Fi, Wi-Fi 6 in this case. Uh, I would say it's an okay camera, especially when filming in 4K, the results are quite decent. And also the photos, I'm talking about the back camera. Pretty loud speakers and a very, very satisfying bass. Actually blew me away, uh, above expectations that bass. Um, also the collaboration features are nice to have and to see on this device. I'm actually pretty impressed by Harmony OS for an operating system announced only two years ago. It's come a long way and I look forward to seeing version 3.0. And the stylus and keyboard are great, especially if you're getting them in a bundle in the debut of the tablet as a, well, special offer. Those are the pros. Uh, and on the con side, now the device can get smudged easily at the back side, especially. Uh, there's no fingerprint scanner to keep things more safe and um, the selfie capture isn't pretty impressive. There are also no Google services or Google apps available. The magnet of the case, like I said, for the Huawei MatePad Pro review isn't very strong. And there's no audio jack, that's a drawback, which I think that is not exactly a problem. So that's pretty much it. As you can see, not many cones here. So uh, I would say it's a pretty solid device for around $500. And if you want performance, it's excellent. If you want productivity, it's also excellent. And if you want the strongest base on a tablet and an excellent screen, I can also easily recommend it. Basically, the only hesitation would be the software, which will autocorrect itself as time goes by. So this is excellent in three areas, productivity, gaming, and media, and can easily fight the iPads and Samsung tablets out there, provided you can get accustomed to Harmony OS, which shouldn't require too much time. This is from tabletnews.com. Hope you enjoyed this lengthy review. We have a lot to tell you and even more soon. Bye-bye.